As our first stop on our Capitalia tour, Sicily was a remarkable region to start. It was very authentic and helped us ease our way into the Italian culture. Upon arrival into Palermo, we were all immediately amazed by the streetscapes and how narrow everything was. As we traveled on to other cities, including Agrigento, Syracuse, Martimeme, and Nato, we continued to recognize this theme. We are sure the locals got quite the amusement seeing 15 Americans drag luggage on foot-wide sidewalks, dodging fiats and mopeds. A two-hour boat ride was the beginning of a trip that took us 7,500 years into the past, a time when the extraordinary megalithic temples of Malta were built. The beauty of the land and sea could be experienced in all directions of the small island nation. After a short-lived visit, we embarked upon a grueling 24-hour boat ride, which ultimately led to another beautiful Italian destination. Uh, heads up. <laughs> heads up again. Safely back on land with wobbly knees and weak stomachs, we trekked on what was supposed to be a two-hour downhill excursion across the Amalfi Coast and then turned out to be more like a four-hour uphill and then hour down thousands of stairs journey. Despite the 2,312 stairs, bloody heels, and aching knees, we enjoyed a beautifully scenic hike along one of Italy's most colorful and breathtaking coastlines. Ah, the hectic city of Rome, full of historic monuments like the Colosseum, Trevi Fountain, and Super Pizza! And Super Pizza. As we conquered the cobblestone streets, we immersed ourselves in the lively, bustling, busy, big city Italian culture. We realized why Rome wasn't built in a day and that it's still continuing to grow. Besides getting a lesson in history, we discovered some modern works by world renowned architects like Renzo Piano, Richard Meyer, and Zaha Hadid. It's amazing to relive so many important pieces of the Roman culture, but to also see the contrast of the original city and modern day world. But between all the craziness, we managed to find some moments to kick back, drink wine, and stay up way too late, even with 8am tours. But like they say, when in Rome, Right. 
Florence, within the Tuscany region, was at the center of the revolution in the 15th century. Along with San Gimignano and Siena, these three cities compromised the masters of the Renaissance. Their tall towers, brick construction, terracotta roof tiles, and natural stones set apart architecture in the Italian Renaissance. Michelangelo, Brunelleschi, and Alberti comprise three of the most influential artists and architects of the Renaissance. The famous Ponte Vecchio, or Old Bridge, brings together old and new Florence through its magical experience. Gelato, shopping for fine jewels, and pizza are just a few of the best delicacies throughout the Tuscan region. Continuing our journey along the west coast of Italy, we find ourselves in the rugged portion of the Italian Riviera. The land of Cinque Terre composed of five fishing villages. Picturesque villages spread along the shared 11-mile coastline, connected only by hiking trails and train tracks. The absence of vehicles makes Cinque Terre a popular tourist attraction. Villages compromised of carefully constructed terraces fill the hills along a very steep landscape. These terraces, all vibrantly colored, pop out from the landscape and illuminate the hillside. Not only that, but colors change throughout the day and change the setting and feeling of the villages. The city of Venice is a city unlike any other. Venice consists of 117 bodies of land connected by more than 400 bridges over 150 canals. There are two ways of getting around Venice, by boat or on foot. The essence of Venice is wandering its tiny streets over small bridges, past gondolas, and into active squares filled with cafes and bars. With so much to see, it's easy for visitors to lose themselves in their surroundings. And get lost we did. The labyrinths of alleys ensured that we would lose our way during any given venture. Even with maps, we had to rely on various wayfinding techniques such as signs, landmarks, and even memory to find our way from point A to point B. Despite best efforts, sometimes you just have to accept that you are going to get lost, which is not always a bad thing. The sooner you learn to actually enjoy it, the sooner you will begin to fall in love with them. Milan was an interesting place uh, because it was a travel stop more than anything. We didn't get to spend much time. However, with our separations, we got to enjoy uh, Vicenza and Carlo Scarpa's Castle Vecchio, and a few adventurous folks got to enjoy the Swiss Alps and a scare with an avalanche. Um, but in the end, we all got to meet up and enjoy uh, Milan for one last night together in Italy. And off we go! Up, up, and up some more. Throughout France, we found places where we could feel like we were on top of the world. Well, in my case, Queen of the Mountain! This was quite fitting because our first stop was through the mountains and valleys of the Alps up to the highest lift point, Mont Blanc. 
Though some freaked out, we all made the steps to the edge to look over the glorious spectacle. Our last stop on our Cap Italia journey was in Paris. Though our time in Paris was all too brief, we made the most of it, taking in as much of the sprawling city as we could. The Louvre, Pompidou, Notre Dame, and Eiffel were some of the names that we visited. We were all taken in by the rich culture and the history of Paris, and all too soon we had to leave the City of Lights to go back home to the States.
straight 